I'm KS Garner, and you're listening to the Solo Nerdbird Podcast. Today, I'll be speaking with the co-founder, editor-in-chief, and collaborator from 123 Go Publications, Phoebe Xavier. Welcome, Phoebe. Hi, thanks you for, thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. But uh, outside of my introduction, who is Phoebe Xavier, and what are you about? Um, I am a middle-aged trans woman um, who is about science fiction and um, to a lesser degree fantasy, but I'm all about creativity, writing, unique artistic expression. I make comic books. Um, I write short stories. I dabble in comedy. I used to do music. Um, and yeah, um, I'm from New Jersey and I currently live in the Midwest. Okie dokie. So, I mean, you did the story for, I think it was 13th Moon that I read. I think that was probably my one of my favorites from uh, the ones that you sent me. I really liked it. And you have the jacket there with all the um, patches on there, too, which is pretty cool. I, I only had um, one story in that book. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but yes, I did. That book was both my idea uh, to do a Halloween anthology every year that would be mostly horror stories. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had the one four-page four, four page story in there, which was the most science fiction-oriented story in that um, collection. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun to do. We actually assembled a volume two and then did a Kickstarter that failed this past October. Um, and then I had a computer crash and I lost like 30 pages worth of my lettering on that book. So I'm, I have that computer at a specialist right now and I'm paying a hefty, um, bill to get my data recovered. Oh, wow. Yeah. I actually had one of my, uh, uh, hard drives crash and I lost like a year worth of stuff and I just couldn't get it back. I mean, I tried to save all my stuff in my emails for as long as I can before it fills up, but yeah, it, all that stuff completely gone. I was I was devastated. <laughs> well, I'm willing to pay $840 is what they're charging me to um, recover some percentage of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Well, how did you get involved or connect, or I should say, I guess, help uh, found uh, 123 Go Publications? And how do you, I guess you mentioned it already, but how do you contribute to the um, indie, comic, indie comics published there? Okay, so um, I think that um, I first connected with a lot of the people that I work with uh, through Facebook comic book um, sites, that they, uh, there are certain groups that are designated to either match artists with writers, artists with other artists, artists with publishers, um, or like one of them uh, is specifically uh, people who make anthologies or who write in anthologies. So it's just like all different um modalities of comic book creation that you can find a Facebook group for. And so um, I had already been working on Sidereal Apogee on my own, which is my first book, my cyberpunk book. And um, I put out two issues of that. And I had been working on um, our first issue of Gunmetal Black Ops. And that was when I started working with Frederick and Jeffrey Haas, uh, who set this interview up. And um, I just like realized, okay, I'm not just putting out my own book now. I'm publishing other people's material, and um, I want to not be limited to just one or two books. I want to keep the uh, options open for making as many books as we possibly could. So I decided to create a brand. Um, I had um, I had sent my book Trouble in to a few indie uh, publishers, and I had not been picked up by those. I had um, I had submitted to Dark Horse and uh, Image and Vault and got no sort of um, uh, deal out of, out of that publishing deal from any of them and decided to do it myself, DIY. Yeah, that seems the way to go for a lot of people, especially when during the pandemic, they was like, oh, I might as well just go ahead and start something. But it's so difficult to get in the door in a way. You kind of just have to like, be out, have the work ready and prepared to be outside the door. And hopefully one day it opens, you can sneak your way in there. But yeah, it's, it seems like everybody's kind of like just starting the whole thing because they kind of have to. Yeah. And I mean, if, if my first submission to the, the indie publishers doesn't get accepted, maybe they'll take me more seriously next time when I show up with, like you said, like five other titles and be like, I don't just have this one idea. I have a whole team and we have a lot of ideas. So can you elaborate a little bit more on your creative process? So 
How do you typically navigate from start to finish on an idea to publication? Um, well, for my own stories, I have a kind of um, uh, pretty standard and well-tested uh, formula, which is I come up with a cool title and I come up with a cool ending and then I fill in the details in between. And um, that's that's really how simple my, my process is. But um, the filling in the details in between, then it comes to like, moving it over to an outline. Like, can I do a one page outline? All right, I need these 10 things to happen. And then how many pages is the story? Okay, so this much has to happen per page and sort of um, extrapolate it out of that kind of process. Um, for other, for when, uh, for when I'm working as an editor, like I like to, uh, I'd like to, uh, leave the artist or writer's vision in place as much as possible, but I also like to get the best story possible out of their idea. So um, I've definitely been known to um, edit heavily when presented with an idea that I like most of it, that, that I like 80% of it. I'm like, all right, well, let me coach you to the other 20% that I want to see um, that we have to address to get this to, into a really good shape that I want to publish it. So uh, could you talk a little bit more about the uh, Gunmetal Black Ops uh, horror anthology that you, I guess, is something that you do every year? Or is there any other project that you want to talk about? Because you did send me multiple um, anthologies that you're all working on. I think I sent you Trouble Number One and three, three, the first three issues of Gunmetal Black Ops. Yes. Um, and also 13th Moon Volume One. Yes. Um, so we okay gunmetal black ops is a lot of fun it's our espionage book and um it actually is the main showcase for two of frederick b roseman's uh characters uh black cauldron and jade lion they mm -hmm. are a lesbian they're a lesbian couple um that uh is also like the world's deadliest assassins and frederick had been doing uh, pinups of them for years that in his local he's he lives in mississippi and that in the mississippi conventions he went to he would like print posters of these bodacious badass ladies and you know had a fan base kind of already like for people who knew the characters without them ever appearing in a comic book yet and him and i were working on some other stories for sidera apogee and some other pitches that i was working on and so i was like hey i love your characters how about i write a story for them and then you draw it and we publish it and that's where most of uh, gunmetal black ops number one came from was me and him working on that blood diamonds 15 page story um then I also, though, um, was blessed to uh, first start working with Jeff, who is now one of my main contributors, um, and also helping uh, arrange stuff like this promo uh, that I do for the, the brand, um, because he's plugged into the whole podcast world the way he is. And um, Jeff runs his own podcast at the moment. He used to be part of uh, another one. Um, but yeah, and he works as a publicist for people to um, promote their uh, Kickstarter, which he's been pretty successful, I think, seven for seven on that, six for six or seven for seven. Mm -hmm. And But his story was about a angel sent to hell to kill Lucifer. And um, I, I had him switch the ending so that um, we killed Lucifer instead of Moloch was actually going to die in the original uh, right uh, and the, the way it was originally written. And um, so because I kept that character alive, Jeff came back a month or two later and was like, hey, how about we do a five or two series about this character now? And mm -hmm. I like the story as he had it designed and we're working on issue three at the moment. So. Um, and then for the second issue, I think we had um, a mode, um pitched me a story idea that Frederick wound up writing. It's the second um, Black Aldrin Jade Lion story. And what other stories did we put in that issue? Oh, and it was, um, I think, two of my, um, two of my cyberpunk type uh, espionage stories that fit into the Sidereal Apogee universe as well, but um, also fit the... Um, the theme of gunmetal black ops which is espionage assassins intelligence uh you know se secret ops or whatever uh-huh well it seems like you have so many hats you know a co-founder editor-in-chief you're a letterer um editor obviously and then a creator yourself so like how do you keep your mental well-being in check as an individual but making sure <laughs> it doesn't interfere with the collaborative effort at one, two, three, go. 
I think when I, well, when I initially started doing this, um, I had lived mostly as a couch surfer sort of um, uh, hobo that bounced around the country a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, and I was living uh, strictly off of social security disability. So it's like a small amount of money each month that allows me to eat, um, maybe catch an Amtrak ticket to my friend's house and then um, uh, pay a couple hundred dollars to my art team and, you know, get through each month, like barely. And then um, in the last two years, I've been looking at more getting more settled back into a, um, into the workforce. And so it became harder. I, I worked for a year in Philadelphia at the Front Street Cafe, which is a wonderful place. Um, it was a wonderful place to work. And uh, but then, yeah, I was working four days a week in food service and then three days a week on running one, two, three, go. And I don't think I don't we hardly slowed down operations. I think we put out a lot of material actually that year. And um, then I went back on the road for a couple months this summer. And um, then I went to Florida for a few months and was working again in food service. Um, but I couldn't find a good place to live. So now I bounced out to Nebraska with friends out here. So I don't know. Yeah, there is a, a good deal of uh, um, juggling all the all the things in life, that, all the responsibilities that, that an adult has. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think though, um, being being the person that's in charge is a good designated role. I have a lot of experience in leadership in various other capacities. And so I don't think that anyone on my team like doubts me as being the person that's like, okay, this is what we're going to do. And this is how we're going to do it. I'm not like authoritarian in that I, I, I'm open to their ideas as well. I'm not going to be like, nope, I don't even want to hear your idea. I want to hear your ideas. But if you don't have ideas, I do. So um, let's run with what I have until someone comes up with a better idea. And um and we, it's about fun. I mean, it's really about fun. These characters like that we come up with are, are, are that's our imagination, having fun every day. And to, to actually, after a year or two years, um, have a finished comic book based on dialogue you wrote and characters that you came up with, like it's really great feeling. So um, the the minor financial success, or even if I wind up in the red half of the half of the year, half of the time, like that is that it, that means nothing compared. All the hard work means nothing compared to how good it feels to be like, hey, this is my comic book. Do you want to buy it? Five dollars. Like here, I made this. Uh -huh. So, so, so uh, yeah. I'm sorry. You you can you can finish if you want to. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know if anything I was saying was actually answering directly to your question. So. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it answers my question. Um, so what advice would you offer to other creators who are looking to join a publishing company or a studio or maybe start their own that you wish someone would have told you when you first started? Um, uh, definitely, I'd say uh, get, get, get on Instagram and um, get on your uh, social media game. Uh, and start doing these podcast appearances and network with other people that write blogs and stuff like that. Um, if if you're not going to be if you're not going to become famous even in the underground circuit because image picks you up or because um, some other uh, AD two thousand picks you up or whomever picks you up, if you're not going to get through that way, like you're going to have to make yourself loud enough and visible enough that people learn of you somewhere else, that you become famous just because you're on 70,000 podcasts or like you're at 70,000 comic book conventions and they're like, oh, that's that person. I always see them or I always hear about them or this or that. Um, and uh, and yeah, and recognize that it is a community. So like treat your, like conduct yourself with, um, you know, some, some sort of decorum and dignity that you're not just um, upsetting the other, uh, other people in your community. Um, I know that me and Jeff stay, stay alert for, oh, wait, does this person have, um, Gamergate connections? <laughs> like, uh, we, can we work with this person? They have game, hashtag Gamergate on their Twitter <laughs> account. What is that all about? And you do occasionally, uh, encounter these sort of naive younger dudes that are like, oh, I didn't understand all this negative, like, connotation that goes along with that. I thought it was just, we're promoting each other shit. Like, no, that's definitely some crazy misogynistic racist shit that you're, like, hashtagging. But okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, be, uh, be professional and also just stick at it. The most important thing for a writer, I think, is A, learning how to pitch and B, with your pitches, le learning to accept uh, rejection. Because if every time you get a rejection letter that, that, that 
takes you out of your game and you can't write for a couple months because you're depressed, then you were not built to be a writer. Like you should be ready for like four rejection letters a month and being like, all right, well, then I got to write five new stories. Um, because nobody's first idea was their million dollar idea that, um, you know, that they got rich and famous off of. Um, all of the overnight success takes 10 years, basically. Uh huh, exactly. So, my last question for you, Phoebe, is what is your idea of success? You kind of already addressed it a little bit, but I was wondering if you could elaborate on it more. So as creators, if we're not earning regular paychecks from a full-time job or making revenue from our art, we're considered failures or we consider ourselves failures. Many of us will put our dreams and projects on the back burner or give them up altogether because this career path can be highly intimidating and competitive. So what is your idea of success like right now? Or has it changed or is it kind of the same? No, I mean, just being able to, um, you know, pay for my own food and, you know, run a board or whatever, and also be still doing um, comic books that, that the live in the dream um, of creating, despite the fact that I'm not signed to Disney or Marvel or any huge corporation, that I still get to write and publish these books about characters whom I love and created. And I think that um, that's what most indie creators are in it for at the moment. Like, um, I think if their their aspirations are to be like the next um, uh, Gail Simone or like who, who, who other successful big name comic book sort of person, like, like it doesn't, it's not gonna be, we're not all gonna be Stan Lee. It's impossible. There's not mm -hmm. enough, uh, it's not enough space in the universe for 10,000 Stan Lees. So, um, yeah, I think success maybe even for other people is to get to that realization that, like, it's okay to be an incredible artist but only moderately successful in the industry because of how oversaturated the world is with comic book creators at the moment. So. Uh-huh. I agree. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you want to touch on about um, 123 Go publications that I may have missed? I want to um, get people to go to our Instagram for one of our new books. It's called uh, Vikings Saga of the North. And it's like at Vikings underscore saga underscore of saga the sa underscore North. And that is um, Jose Diaz's book. He is from Guatemala. I've been working with him for a couple months on a book that we'll be putting, be putting out that is um, a historical account, historically accurate account of Viking culture and the age of the Vikings. And um, so that might be our next big Kickstarter. And while I'm in between other, um, like Serial Apogee probably won't release a book till almost next December, uh, issue seven might come out. Um, we have a Gunmetal Black Ops number four will come out sometime this year. But the next um, big Kickstarter sort of push that we're gonna do is probably uh, yeah, this Vikings book, which if you get on the Instagram, you'll see there's a lot of images uh, of what the pages are going to look like already there. Okay, cool. Well, again, I want to thank Phoebe Xavier, co-founder, editor-in-chief, and collaborator from 123 Go Publications for joining me today. I highly recommend our listeners to give 123 Go's website a look and support in any way that they can. Also, Vikings of, what was it, Vikings? I'm sorry, I forgot it already. Uh, the Vikings, uh, by, uh, Saga yeah. of the North, Saga of the North, um, all of one, two, three goes publications, um, socials. And like I said, the website will be listed in this episode's details for those who are interested. Again, I am KS Garner and you have been listening to the solo Nerd podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me.